Ba -ba -ba. Hello and welcome. Magma Rhino here, and today I'm doing the in-depth review of my Galaxy S3. Um, a lot of you have been asking when I'm going to do a review, and well, right now is when I'm doing it. Um, anyway, so this is going to be a very long review. Expect it to be 70, 80 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pop up a list of all the topics I'm going to cover right here along on the left. And I'm going to put links to jump where you want to go if you don't want to watch the whole thing, if you're just looking for specific parts of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop all these up now. I'm going to give you about five seconds or so. And if you want to go to any of them, click now. It'll bring you right to them. For those of you who want to watch the whole thing, I'm about to get started. And uh, I might actually do this video in two parts. You won't notice. There's just going to be a little gap. Um, because it's going to be a long time. But anyway, so I'm going to start here with the unboxing. The box, um, first off, it's got this sleeve on the outside. It basically has some uh, information, AMOLED, Android, Wi-Fi, package content, stuff like that. Take it out of the sleeve, it looks the same, only the box is almost entirely empty, with the exception of this sticker um, that says printed in China. Alright, so now this box once you take off the lid, you immediately see the phone right there. Um, it is really, really nice. Um, and a lot of people have been saying it looks better in person than on camera, and I have to admit it does. Um, the camera doesn't really capture like the sheen and uh, just the looks of it as it would if you were looking at this in person. Um, so anyway, it comes with this little plastic piece on the cover. You could peel that off and see that beautiful screen. I'm going to set it aside for just one second. I know everybody hates when you do that, but you got to. There's other stuff in the box. Um, well, I lied, there isn't really in my box. Anyway, you'll get your SIM card, which um, mine's popped out. It's actually... Never mind, I'm not going to get into that long story. Um, you get your little starter guide here. Um, Oh, this is actually what the SIM card comes in. It comes in this with a little 4G LTE info booklet. And this card is sitting in here. So you can see it through that packaging. Alright, I'm going to set that up there. And the rest is packaging. I'll show you, though, what else came. What else came was the charger. Uh, here's the adapter. Um, this being the Verizon. Actually, the US version, my bad. Um, it's just, you know, the standard two-prong, uh, pretty, pretty long cable. I'm very happy about that. Um, if you've seen my Asus Transformer one, you'll know my complaint is too short. This is folded over four times and it fits on the screen. Um, I'd say it's mm, six, seven-foot cable. Actually, let me measure it against myself right now. Uh, yep, it's a six-foot cable. So you get a six-foot charging cable, very nice. And you also get these headphones. Um, they are the in-ear kind, and you get a bunch of different sized um, headphone pieces. So if you have different shaped ears, or if you like smaller or bigger, or um, these like squishy, soft type um, plug kind of things, you can switch them out with whatever you'd like. You also have backups in case you lose them, um, or they just get dirty after a while. Um, and I must say, these have really, really amazing sound quality. Um, I'm coming from Apple headphones. I've always just used them. I've never bought any. Um, so, like, even on my Droid, I'd listen to it on the Apple headphones. And uh, they aren't the loudest. The bass is really lacking. I mean, they're decent. Um, nothing too amazing. But these, they're really, really amazing to listen to. They look nice. Um, they have a volume control and a, a button that pauses your music and answers calls. And they have a microphone on the back. Um, so they are, the sound quality is nice, they look nice, they work nice. The cord is a bit longer than your standard headphones, which is good if you're putting your phone in your pocket, because I know sometimes with the Apple ones, they wouldn't really fit, uh, reach my ear. So anyway, these are good, moving on. Um, unboxing is all done now, so I'm going to move on to the next section, which is the design and the size of the Galaxy S3. Size is going to come first. So let me just get this out of the way for you guys. And we will move on. Alright. So, 
First off, size. This is my hand. My hand is, I'd say, average size. I'm 17, um, 5'8", so not like the tallest, biggest. So for my age, average size, if you're like a, a full-grown male, it might be a bit bigger in your hands. As you can see, this is it in my hand. Um, I can, if I reach, I have to reach a little bit to get the upper corner, but everywhere else I'm fine with, um, you know, just scooting a tiny bit to get from top to bottom, but it's really not that bad to hold. Um, if you are a, a woman, your hands might be a little smaller than mine, it might be a little bit difficult. Um, also, if you are younger, if you're 14, 15, it might be a bit more difficult to reach most areas of the screen. Um, let me just quickly compare size. Here is a standard lock um, from like a school. So as you can see, um, click to close, it's like half the height. I have a pen here, just like a standard pen, pretty much the height of a pen. I also have a Magic 8 Ball, <laughs> just for, um, you know, size comparison purposes. Um, but anyway, I also have my Droid 3 here. As you can see, pretty similar size. It's a tiny bit higher, a tiny bit wider. Um, if I had an iPhone here, I would show you, but both of my parents are actually away at the moment, so I cannot show you a compared to an iPhone, but it is quite bigger as opposed to the iPhone. Um, do I have anything else? No. Okay, so moving on, you pretty much get the idea of the size to the design of it. It's got a really simplistic, nice design. Let me just clean the screen real quick for you guys. Okay. So as you can see, very, very simple design. Up top, it's got the Samsung logo, the earpiece, a proximity and uh, light sensor, and also the front-facing camera. Down here, you got the home button. It is a physical button. It's got a nice uh, response to it. Not too much travel, but just enough. Um, got chrome accents around it. And it also has two soft keys here, which are invisible when they aren't on, which is really nice. I like that. Uh, the bezel is pretty small. Um, it's slightly bigger than that on an iPhone, but it's still pretty small. Um, if you go along the side here, volume rocker, you also have these chrome accents. Bottom, micro USB and a microphone. This side, power button, more chrome. Um, and then top, the rest of the chrome, your 3.5mm headset jack, and a little finger hole to pop off the back cover, but I'll do that in a second. Um, here you got your flash, camera, and speaker, and this is a very simplistic design here, as you can see. And then Verizon, of course, being the big butt that they are, they put their logo right there in the center, and they bump the Galaxy S3 down to here. That's pretty much it. So it is a very simple design, but it's very nice. It feels solid. Like, normally phones with the backing and take off, it has some give here. This doesn't. It, it feels really solid. It feels like it is a solid-backed phone, and you cannot take this back cover off. It is that, like, tightly on there. Um, the weight, it's, I'm not sure the exact specifications, so I will throw them on the screen down here as long as I remember. Um, the depth is, I believe, 0.35, uh, slightly thinner than an iPhone again. And uh, the other dimensions, you know, you can just, if you really want to know, you can look them up, or I'll put them down there if I remember. I'll try to remember that. Um, so the feel on the hand, it's really nice because it is rounded here, as you can see. Um, it's not all boxy like a lot of the phones are nowadays. Um, so holding it, it feels nice. It's very comfortable to hold. Um, the buttons are in the perfect spot. So if you're holding it like this, you can just hit this button, power button with your thumb. It's not really a stretch at all. Home button's a little bit down there, but um, not too bad. Um, when you hold it, it is it does feel a little bit top heavy just because it is so tall. So you got to be careful of having it like slip backwards like this when you're holding it. Um, so for that reason, I would definitely recommend you get a case, um, you know, just in case to protect it. So right now I'm just going to turn it on while I uh, finish going over the design. You're going to notice that it is not the stock Verizon bootloader because I hated it. Um, I'm rooted, but don't worry, I barely changed anything that you can notice, and I will tell you what I did change so you know. So basically, this is normal. This is what you'll see on the stock one. But now this animation is Samsung's international animation. Um, Verizon's one, it has like an LTE and then like a pulse out. But I really don't know if you would care that much. Um, here are the soft keys, as you can see, lit up now. Um, and that's pretty much it for the design. Um, it is a very nice design. It is uh, sleek. 
You can get it in white or pebble blue. Pebble blue has like a nice accent to it, kind of a pattern. Um, but I liked the white better personally. I'm just going to shift down my camera a little bit. Okay. And a zoom zoom. There we go. Alright, just getting it all situated for the next section. The next section is actually hardware. I'm just going to talk about this for a quick second. Um, the screen is a 1280 by uh, 720 AMOLED. Uh, I believe it's Super AMOLED screen. I'm going to actually go over that in a second. I purposely texted myself. I'm not that weird. <laughs> um, uh, so the 1280 by 720 Super AMOLED screen. Uh, this is an improvement over the Galaxy Nexus because Samsung says they put the pixels closer together to reduce the pentile effect of it. Uh, stop. Okay, there we go. Um, under the hood, you have a Snapdragon S4 processor, 1.5 gigahertz. You also get two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, for networks, you get the LTE, CDMA, um, and Edge. Um, camera's back is an 8 megapixel autofocus with flash. Front is a 1.9 megapixel, which takes 720p video. Um, what else am I missing? I think that's pretty much it for specs. Um, as far as the important ones go, I will go over any more if I miss them. Um, next, battery life, really quickly, it's uh, decent, it can get through you, you through a day, no problem, unless you're playing games and watching videos all day. Um, even on running on the LTE network, it has been plenty to get me through the day. Um, so whether you're on Wi-Fi or LTE, you should be able to make it unless you're using up stuff like crazy. Alright, um... I can't read my handwriting. Lock screen. As you saw, I was just playing with. This is the lock screen. When you have messages, it shows a little message bubble here. If you tap and swipe away, it will bring you right to those messages. Um, you have four shortcuts down here, which you can get rid of or edit. If you tap and drag up, it will bring you to that shortcut. So there you go. It took me to the camera. Um, otherwise, if you just want to unlock normally, you just swipe in any direction. It's got a nice ripple effect, which of course can be disabled. Um, there's lots more options on this phone than standard Android ones. I'll just say that first. Um, and you can also have an information ticker. Um, as you can see, I have the weather up here and the time. And this is all stuff you can edit if you so choose to. Um, now I'm just going to put my case on the phone t because it reduces the slip while I'm touching. Um, because the back is pretty slippery. So, alright, better. So, what I'm going to do now is go over the home screen. This is the home screen. As you can see, the animations are buttery smooth, and they are throughout the phone. Um, opening the app drawer. Whoops, that's the browser. <laughs> opening the app drawer, smooth. Pages are smooth, um, very quick, responsive. Uh, the screen is really, really slick, which I like. It's Gorilla Glass 2. So that's supposed to be more scratch and shatter resistant, um, but I just noticed that it's super smooth and slick, and it's very easy to slide your finger across it, even if it's hot out and your fingers are a little sticky. Um, on this home screen, it is a 4x4 grid. You have widgets and icons, of course, as you can see. But the cool part is, um, like on other Samsung Galaxy phones, you can edit the number of home screens and the layout. Like, if you just want to quickly swap two screens, you can do it. You tap and drag. You can set default screens, whoops. If you tap the little box up there, you can set your default screen and you can add new screens just like that. You can delete them. Super easy to edit your screen layout, how many you have. Um, as you notice, it is infinitely scrolling, which I don't preferably like, but some people do because say you're here, you want to go all the way over. You just swipe once instead of having to go like this. But you can also tap on the bubble to go to that screen if you'd like down here. Um, app drawer, as you can see, it's got the apps and the widgets laid out, and it's also that infinite scroll, but it doesn't go right to widgets. You have to tap the widgets tab, um, which is, I don't know, I like, I don't really care. I'm used to scrolling right to widgets, so sometimes I still do that, but it's not a big deal once you get used to it. Um, and I'm going to go over the widgets that are built in later. So let me just show you all of the settings you have for here. Um, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> First setting, you have an option to go to the Play Store. Second, you can edit. Um, you can edit your layout here, which I don't like to do. I like to keep it alphabetical. 
Third, you can uninstall. You can rapidly uninstall lots of files. Um, it's like those apps you get to batch uninstall, but this is easier. Well, it's not easier, it's built in. Next, you can show just downloaded applications. These are all the ones I downloaded. Quite a lot, I know, but I use Titanium Backup to restore all my apps from my old phone. Um, you can here is how you can sort. You can have a customizable grid, or you can alf have alphabetical grid or alphabetical list like this. Um, I guess some people might like the list, but I personally like the grid. Plus, there's a lot more you can do. For some reason, on the list, you can't um, do everything that you can on the grid. Um, next is share apps, obvious. And next is a really good one. It's hide applications. What it does is it allows you to check any applications you want and you can hide them. As you may have noticed, I've got none of that Verizon bloatware, Samsung bloatware on here. It's all hidden. Um, I just kept a few of them that I like, like my Verizon. I could check my stuff. I don't know why I checked uh, or kept Messenger, but whatever. But you can always here see all the ones that you have hidden. So these are all those, like the guided tours, who would ever want to see that? Verizon apps, nobody really cares. You don't want to pay by month. Mobile hotspot, eh. Some of this music stuff, it's not worth it. Uh, Google Talk I never use, so I just hide it, and it doesn't show up here or ever unless you go to show hide applications, you check them and you show them again. So it is a wonderful feature, I love it. Uh, this is also a shortcut to your downloaded applications. Um, wow, 15 minutes already. I got a lot more to go through too. Next, I'm doing the notification bar, and here is the other edit I made. Um, first, you can see any of your notifications. Normally on Verizon there is an ongoing Wi-Fi notification. It just tells you what your Wi-Fi current Wi-Fi status is, and it's so annoying, and I had to get rid of it. That's the main reason I rooted, just to get rid of that. I'm not even kidding. Um, but anyway, up here you have your toggles. It's pretty nice because you can scroll over and you have ten a total of ten toggles. You have three modes you can enable, sync, uh, screen rotation you can lock. Actually, sorry, there's nine. The screen rotation's still there. Uh, but still, nine toggles. You can turn on off mobile data, change the vibrate mm -hmm. mute to sound, mm -hmm. GPS and Bluetooth enable. Unfortunately, Wi-Fi isn't here because it's on that w ongoing notification, but I'm sure there's going to be some kind of rooting hack where you can add the Wi-Fi toggle up there, um, which I would really like. Um, there's also a shortcut to your settings, which I'm going to go over uh, the settings soon. Um, your notifications here, like before, you can swipe to get rid of them, or you can tap to go to them. Now, one quick thing about the notification bar that makes this far superior to any other I have used is if you are on a full screen app, like my browser I've set to full screen, you want to get to your notification bar, normally you can't. In this you can. You just swipe down from the top and it appears. You can look, you can see the time, your battery, all that stuff. You push it up and it's gone. Just like that. It is an amazing feature. Um, and really every phone should have that. It should be an Android default kind of feature because it's that good. And um, really, I, I don't see the point of not having it. It just makes everything easier. Also, I just want to show you multitasking real quick. Um, same as standard Android, except you have two buttons down here. One to remove all of these guys, so before you had to go swipe, 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 swipe. So you get rid of them and all, now you just hit remove all, and guess what? They're all gone. Also, task manager brings you right here. It shows you your RAM, storage, uh, downloaded stuff. Uh, what's currently running. As you can see, RAM, when you clear the memory, you have about 500 megabytes um, used, and normally running, you're using between 7 and 800. So that leaves up, up to 800 megabytes for a single app to use, on top of other ones that are open. If you just close them all, it hovers around 550. So, you know, if you just close them all, and that theoretically could use a gigabyte of RAM, which is pretty crazy, and it's going to allow for some... Uh, very, very nice games to be made when more phones get this 2GB RAM. Um, also, as you notice, the messages has a little icon in the upper right that tells you how many unreads you have. Alrighty, moving on to the next section, it is your settings. Oh, also here, I didn't show you, but you can make folder search and settings here. Um, but anyway, going to the settings. I'm going to go over all of these, which might take some time. Um, but then next, I'm going to do the motion settings, which are here. I'm going to go over those separately. First off, Wi-Fi. There's toggles for Wi-Fi, mobile hotspot, and Bluetooth right on this 
setting screen, which is nice. Um, here you can have it notify you with networks. It shows your Wi-Fi networks you have saved and that you're connected to. Go to your advanced. You can have auto connect um, when you uh, use a high data usage application. Um, I just I like to be in control of the Wi-Fi, so I don't feel like doing that. Keep Wi-Fi on during sleep. You can have it shut off when it sleeps or Oh, never mind. Sorry, I read something wrong. <laughs> Brain fart. Um, you can also scan here, and settings is just managing all your networks that you have saved, which I only have that one. All right, mobile hotspot. Um, it's really self-exclamatory. You have to pay, I believe it's 10 bucks a month to Verizon to use that. So no, don't do that. I would recommend, if you want to use a mobile hotspot, root and get this app, Wireless Tether. I'll just show you real quick. Here. It's called Wi-Fi Tether. Here works perfectly, not a problem. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. Don't don't pay ten bucks for to Verizon for that. It's not worth it. Bluetooth, I uh, believe it's Bluetooth 4.0, so it's going to be using less and less battery than ever before. Quick toggle um, in here. You know you can do the scan uh, devices, timeout. You can transfer data, stuff like that. Data usage here. You can turn on and off your mobile data. I don't know why mine's on right now. I am home, that doesn't make sense, um, but actually it has to be on for you to set your mobile data limit and to change these guys. I have a warning at 1.2 and cuts off at 1.9 because I have a 2, um, two gigabyte plan. That's just in case there's some you know, mismatch and they really rip you off if you go over it all. So just to be safe, I only am doing 1.9. Um, it tells you all your apps and you can also restrict background data if you see it uses a lot, but obviously the store does because I'm not looking at the apps updating. Um, then view the app settings, jump right to their settings. So it's pretty nice. You can change your uh, data usage cycle and you can see your Wi-Fi. You have to enable the Wi-Fi by hitting settings, show Wi-Fi. You can restrict all background data and you can allow data to roam. All right, more settings. Here's a bunch of stuff where usually it's only uh, like three or four. Um, airplane mode, you know what airplane mode is. If you don't, I can't help you. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Virtual private network, um, if you want to use that, you probably know how to already. Tethering, as I said before. NFC, which is the standard Android Beam. Um, you have to like disable and enable them all separately, but I just leave NFC on all the time. Android Beam is NFC Direct. S-Beam is using Wi-Fi Direct. S-Beam allows for much, much quicker um, data transfers, but you have to enable Wi-Fi Direct, which takes up some battery. So basically, if you're going to be transferring a lot of files instantly back and forth that are big, you want to enable Wi-Fi Direct and do that. If you just got a few like web pages or stuff you want to share, just bump them together. NFC, Android Beam works fine. Um, also, when Wi-Fi Direct's on, it shows you any nearby devices. Um, and then mobile networks. Um, unlike on Sprint, you can't disable 4G here. Um, just the option to use packet data, global data, roaming access, and access point names. Nothing you really can mess with. Alright, next is device. The sound here, you got silent mode, vibrate, and vibration intensity, which is pretty cool. Um, you can adjust how intense they are for each. I turned down haptic. haptic. I actually want to turn it down one more, um, just to save some battery. Um, your device ringtone, it's got a whole bunch to pick from. As you can see, there's all these. They all sound pretty funky and cool, but you know you can just pick the ones you like. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, but then also what's cool is you can have your own vibration pattern. Like mm -hmm. You can definitely hear these, so I'm just going to go through a few of them. Mm -hmm. That's the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Jingle bells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the TikTok. Mm -hmm. And then what's cool is you can actually make your own by just doing this. And then you can play it back. <laughs> so it's pretty fun to just play with. Um, you can make your own ringtones and stuff. And you can also set your own uh, notification. Sound and vibration, I always have that checked. Um, if you want to play tones when it does any of this stuff, you can read it yourself. You can check or uncheck this. Auto haptic, what that does is any apps you use, it will automatically enable haptic feedback, which is annoying because. Um, it just uses up battery, and for a lot of apps, it's just weird to have haptic feedback on. So I just, um, I leave that off and I enable them manually if I want to. Uh, display. Here's something that I'm very disappointed that Verizon took out. 
instead of being able to adjust your screen tone manually, you can only set it to auto adjust, which means um, on other phones you can set how you want the AMOLED display to perform if you wanted it to perform uh, realistically or very be very bright, vibrant, stuff like that. Um, you could do it yourself, now it's all auto, which is stupid. Um, brightness, obviously auto, or you can set it what you want. Timeout, uh, 15 min seconds to 10 minutes. Um, smart stay, basically, whenever your timeout is up, about every 30 seconds, it's going to look in your front camera, take a quick picture, and if it sees your face, and if it sees your eyes are open, I know it sounds creepy, but it's not, um, it's going to show a little icon of an eye up there, and it's going to keep your screen on. And then another, see, as you can see, just do the eye icon. Um, if you wait another 15 seconds or so, it's going to do it again. Actually, it's less, but, um, and there it didn't see my face, um, because I kind of moved away a little bit. So it shut off. So it's pretty cool. Um, auto rotate screen, obvious. Touch key light situation, this is these guys, how long you want them to be on, or if you want them to always off is quite honestly dumb unless you want to be like really sneaky with your friends and be like I can go back and do menu and there's no buttons there but it's just weird um, don't do always off unless you want to be weird um, a cool thing that they let you do actually is you can change the font I downloaded this font off the internet and I really like it I'm just gonna show you the default font quickly this is the default font it's kind of um I don't know big and annoying what I well that's what I think um, so I changed my font style, and also that's not the normal font size, it's normally bigger. I changed it to this Scyph, whatever it is, Scyphian. I think it just looks much more elegant and nice. Um, you can also change the size, this is normal, which I think is pretty big, so I changed it to small. Um, I'm supposed to be wearing contacts, I don't. Um, my vision is just a tiny bit blurry, it's nothing major, but I can still read small perfectly fine, so I mean... The only reason you have to do huge is if, um, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, the only reason you have to do huge is, I guess, if you're very old and you have very bad seeing. But anyway, this phone would be good for you because the screen is very big. And, um, very big text, as you can see. But it, it just looks very ugly for those of us who can read small and normal fine. Um, going down, you can display battery percentage up here or choose not to. And you can cal er, calibrate the gyroscope. Wallpapers. I'm going to go over them later. LED indicator here, you can have it have a, let's see if I get these colors right. I think it's uh, it's red light with low battery, it's blue for missed event, and charging I believe it might be green, um, but you can't change the colors, you can just enable or disable them. Low battery, I find it somewhat pointless because I feel like it's just going to waste the battery more, um, but you know, some people like that. Um, and then charging, um, I usually charge my phone at night so it just makes an annoying light so I leave those two off but messages and stuff is good to have that light on motion I'm gonna go into later power savings pretty cool what it does is these four things you can always uncheck them uh, limits the CPU it um, lowers the frame rate on the screen and also it lowers the brightness to save power um, it changes the background colors to black because if you know AMOLED screens um, they take almost no power to display black because the lights, the uh, each pixel is pretty much off, whereas on LCD screens it's just the backlight that's always on. Um, also turns off haptic feedback, but what I've noticed is when you turn on power saving and turn it back off, it doesn't automatically re-enable haptic feedback. So um, if you do use power saving, I would recommend you just uncheck that um, because it's just going to mess with your settings and uh, it's pointless to disable haptic feedback because it's not going to save too much power, but it will save a little. Storage here just shows you how much you used, how much you have left, how much is used by what, and SD card, you know, you can see what's used by the SD card. Uh, battery, it shows how much battery you used, what used that battery, and it shows a little graph here. Um, your signals, Wi-Fi screen on, charging, blah, blah, blah. Um, also, if you go into this stuff, some stuff, it will be how to save battery. You can go into the display and change some settings, stuff like that. <clears throat> application manager. Here you can see your downloaded applications, any applications that are, whoops, any that are running. There we go. And you can see all of them. And if you tap on any application that's like a normal app, let me go to uh, Bubble Shoot. You can force stop it, uninstall it, clear the data, clear the cache. If there are any uh, defaults set for it, 
you can clear them. Like for my browser, I have some defaults. Um, where's the browser? B. Mm. Oh, right, it's called Internet. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, God, I'm going to have to go back to first grade again. Um, F, G, H, I. There we go. As you can see, it has clear defaults um, because some things I have where it clicks, I want it to go right to the Internet. Um, but you basically get the point there. Also, whoops, wrong thing. On the bottom here, it shows you your device memory, how much is used, out of how much is available. Um, down here, accounts and sync. This is all your personal stuff. These are all my accounts. Um, backup assistant plus, which I wish you could get rid of, but you can't. I just disabled that because I don't use it. I use um, Google, Google contacts, whatever it is. I don't know. I forget. Um, Verizon, location, GPS, all location stuff. You can check or uncheck. Security, this is a pretty good one here. Lots of stuff you can do. These are all of these screens you can do, and they are a few more than most, two more, actually two more than most devices, um, one more than the Galaxy Nexus, which is surprising. Actually, two, two, I don't know, there's a lot, that's my point. Swipe is what I'm using now, I'm just going to show you all these very quickly. Swipe is the ripply swipe in any direction, and that's it. Motion is a little bit weird, you have to touch and hold the screen, and then you tip it down, and that unlocks it. So I guess that can keep some people out who don't know how to unlock your screen. Um, but as you can see, it's not as cool because it doesn't have a ripple, but you go like this, tip it down. Oh god, there we go. I was going to say, if I can't unlock my screen, I'm going to be pissed. Um, I don't really like the motion one, though. It's a little weird. Face unlock. Um, it works. I'm not going to actually set it up because it takes it quite a bit to set up. Hello. Um, but basically face unlock, it works very, very good in most conditions. There are some where it doesn't, so you just have to put in a backward password. Face and voice, same thing, but it also has a voice check. Like my friend, he uh, looks exactly like me, so he's able to get past the face, but he doesn't have the same voice as me. So when he does the voice test, it uh, fails and he can't get in. So it just makes it a tiny bit more secure, um, still not, not as secure as any of these other guys down here. Next is the pattern, it's the standard Android pattern you get the nine dots you do whatever you want um, but it also it makes you make a backup pin so before where if you couldn't log in if you failed enough you just put in your email and your password and you get in but some people might know your email and password they shouldn't but they might um, so this makes it where you have to have email password and a pin so it makes it a bit more secure next is just a standard pin it's just as many numbers as you want um, in no longer than 16. Okay, not as many, but who would want a 16-digit pin unless you have, like, some really, really major stuff on here. Um, anyway, next is password, which is letters and numbers, and I believe you can do sim- yep, you can do symbols, too. Uh, you can't do spaces, but, you know, you get it. Um, lock screen options, there's a bunch here, too. You can have these shortcuts, which I showed you before on the bottom. You can throw in an information ticker, which, uh, Did I change my, ah, oh, dang, I didn't change my lock screen. It's this ticker down here, and you can pop it up, and you can see all your stuff. And also, when you pop it up, it makes some cool ripply effects, like this is actually moving in the water, which is cool. It, it like, ripples up. Let me just unlock. There we go. I don't like that. Let me just change that back real quick. Swipe. And there's also none, which is where you hit the lock button, it just immediately turns on the screen. I didn't show you that. Um... So show off the information taker. Camera quick access, that's basically a motion thing. When you, you have to touch the finger and then you turn the, the uh, phone sideways, it goes right to the camera. Um, I will go over that in the motion settings. Um, clock, just shows the clock. You can have a dual clock for when you're roaming. Um, or in like other countries, it'll show your home time and it'll show your t uh, local time, which is cool. Uh, weather, that's what I have enabled. Ripple effect, you can have enabled. Help text tells you swipe in any direction to unlock uh, right there it's kinda hard to see because of the background um, get rid of that and then you can have set wake up commands which is cool because right here I have um, actually kind of two wake up commands this first one unlock I just say wake up and it should uh, unlock the next one I say hi galaxy which is the default for S voice and it goes to S voice so if I say wake up Alright, I talk too much. Hold on. 
because I was talking a lot before I said it, so let me try. Wake up. There we go, and it wakes up. It's really, really cool. It's got a bunch of cool voice effects there. Um, also, Hi Galaxy brings it right to S voice. It is amazing. I love all of these voice effects you can do. Um, it's just really cool. It's not that, um, what's the word? I don't know the word. Um, it's not like as applicable to real life. Like, um, it's not going to be something you're going to use every day. But if you're just lazy, if you're in the car, a uh, text message pops up. You can have some apps, some uh, third-party apps have a text message turns on the screen. Um, you can just say, uh, wake up, and it'll turn on the screen for you, and you don't have to go swipe or put in your code or anything. Um, actually, you can't bypass codes with that, but um, if you have swipe, it will do that. It's cool. Um, lock screen options, I'm done with them. Owner info, you can just have put a quick text thing on your home screen. Um, you can also disable debug mode. Encrypt device, encrypt SD card, remote stuff, SIM change. All this stuff is more technical. Allow unknown sources, so if you want to get into that, you can do it yourself. <laughs> language and input, here's your keyboards, your default language. Uh, voice commands and apps, turn that on. And then your uh, voice recognition thing. Um, I use Swift Key 3 because I'll show you the default keyboard later on, and I don't like it too much. Backup and reset, it's basically what you think it is. Backup with your Google servers. Um, back it up right now if you click that, auto restore, and you can do a factory reset. Down here, some dock options for the uh, the Galaxy dock, which is like pretty cool. It's just a square. It has like a pop-up tab. You can just drop your phone in, and um, it goes into its docking mode. Date and time, you can use your automatic network date and time. Otherwise, you can uh, manually set it. Stuff like that. Use 24-hour if you want, or select date format. What um, order you have your month, day, year. And accessibility, um, <clears throat> you know, basically all phones, sorry, all Android phones have this. Um, nothing really new here. You can do negative colors, which is fun to play around with sometimes. Um, you have uh, mono sound, turn off sounds, blah, blah, blah. Change screen, timeout, accessibility shortcut. Uh, developer options here, you can do USB debugging, mock locations, all your fun stuff here, like show your CPU usage up there, um, show touches, oh, I'm gonna, t oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's showing screen updates, um, but showing touches just shows this guy, which is fun. Showing screen update, or checking screen updates just does whenever there's an update, which is nutty. Um, for CPU rendering, I like to keep that one checked because it helps with animations. Um, and then apps, you can have a set a limit for processes, but with 2 gigs of RAM, you really shouldn't. Um, you can have it automatically kill all apps once you leave them, and ANR stuff. Last section, I'm almost done with settings. Hallelujah. The boring stuff, I know. But, um, you know, some of you might want to see this, so that's why I'm going over it. Software update, you can have it check. It should check automatically. Uh, just in case it doesn't, you can always check manually. The status of all your stuff, as you can see. Uh, you know, your MAC address, blah, 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 your phone number, uh, battery level, oh, shit, I'm gonna have to go block my phone number now, uh, I gotta remember that, hold on, I'm just gonna write this down, so, 3837, so I can block my phone number, because I don't want you guys texting me, that's creepy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, model number. Um, the Verizon is SCHI535, Android version 4.0.4, 4.0.4, this is the Easter egg, it's a little ice cream sandwich man you touch and hold, and it's kind of like Nyan Cat, only it's Androids with ice cream. <laughs> Pretty epic, I know. Um, here's all the kernel and build information in case anybody cares. Alright, that's it for most of the settings, but now I'm going to go into the next section of settings, which is motion settings. Here is all of the motion things you can do. Pretty cool. You can disable and enable all motion effects right here. Um, direct call is a good one. If you do learn about it, you can try all of these. If you are in any contact, you raise it up to your ear. I'm going to do that quick. It's going to automatically call the number. 
So I just raise it up to my ear and it should go. Um, I've noticed that this direct call, you um, see as you can see it's calling now, you really have to like put it close to your face on this uh, the sensor thing for some reason, otherwise it uh, doesn't always know. Smart Alert's cool. What it does, if you have messages, all right, give it a second to turn off. If you have any messages and the screen is off after like a minute or two, what you do is you pick your phone up. When you pick it up, it gives you a little vibrate to let you know that you have messages and stuff waiting. So if you wanted to, you could disable the LED indicator. Just have the smart alert. It also works if you aren't moving and it's in your pocket. When you take it out of your pocket, it'll do that. Tap to top is a pretty good one. It's a tiny bit gimmicky, but not as much. If you're in a list down here, you tap the top twice and it goes right to the top. So simple as that. Um, but not that effective to use. Um, tilt to zoom, if you hold two fingers, actually I'm not going to show you that one because it's really annoying. If you're on a picture, you put two fingers and you tilt forward or back to zoom, it's just annoying. It doesn't really work that well. Um, pan to move icon, this one is not as bad. Um, if you're on the home screen, you can have this icon and if you move your device like this, it will change the page that it's on. So I mean that can work because you know sometimes it's hard to get it right to the edge of the screen and move it. So some people might like to use that one. Let me just shut it off. Oops, there we go. Uh, Panda browse images, same kind of deal. Shake to update is just what it sounds like. You shake and you update. So if you're on a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or whatever, you shake a little and it should give it an update. Oh, go back. So as you can see, it's scanning, and it found two fake devices. Wonderful. Back. Um, so Shaked Update's pretty good. Actually, you know, I'm going to leave that enabled, because that one is pretty good. Um, turn over phone to mute. This one's old. It's been around for a while. I actually had this on my old Gal or Samsung Basic phone. If you have a call or a text or something, and it's going nuts, turn it over, and it'll stop. And it'll automatically mute it. It won't ignore it or hang up. It will just mute it. All right, going back, palm swipe to capture. It's pretty cool. If you want to take a screenshot, you just take your hand and you go like this and you swipe across. It's a bit tricky to get the hang of, but once you get the hang of it, you can take a screenshot very, very quickly and simply. See, that's the default stuff I was talking about before, if you don't know. So as you can see, um, it works. The problem is because you are touching the screen to take the screenshot, Occasionally something will be selected like that or will move from what you want to take a screenshot of. So what I prefer to do is if you hold the power and the volume down button for a second. Oh geez. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Let me just yeah, yeah, there we go. Um so if you volume down and power. I I keep holding them for too long, I am sorry. Click Oh my god, forget it. You can take a screenshot. It's hard with this case on because it's hard to push the power button. But trust me, when the case isn't on, these buttons are easy to press. <laughs> Anyone, uh, palm touch to mute pause. Um, if you're playing a video or something, you put your hand over it and it will pause it and, um, well, pausing it makes it quiet. That's what I meant. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. For all of these settings, thank gosh, all done. Praise the Lord. Alrighty. Next up is the camera. I'm going to go about in the camera app. Let me just zoom in a bit so you can see better. Uh oh, my uh, camera battery's dying, so I'm going to have to break this up a bit. Um, shutter speed is super quick. Watch this. Ready? Picture. Oh, whoops. Flash is on. Um, <laughs> uh, flip back. There we go. Flash off. Okay, this is how quick the shutter is. Auto focusing. Pretty quick. Uh, it takes a little bit, but once it's focused, everything's good. Um, you can tap to focus any part of the screen. But anyway, once it's focused, or even uh, before it's focused, you can take a picture just by touching, and it's pretty much instant. As you can see, it's very, 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 very quick with taking pictures, and you can take a lot quickly. Uh, this switches to the front camera. I don't like to be in that. <laughs> um... Flash, obviously, you know what flash is. It's got all these scenes which are cool. Burst shot, you can take up to 20 pictures. You can turn on best shot, 
I love Best Shot because what it is, is instead of filling up your gallery with all of these useless pictures of the same, 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 same thing with one good one, first shot, you touch it once, it takes eight pictures over a period of two to three seconds, automatically picks the best one, they're all black, so I don't know why it picked that one, I guess it's just because it's last. Um, anyway, it automatically picks what it thinks is the best one, if you think another one is, you can hit done on that, and it saves just that one picture, not all eight. Um, or you can cancel, get rid of all eight, so it's great, I love it. Um, HDR, you know what HDR is, it takes like three different pictures that are different exposure times, stuff like that, and it mixes the best aspects of each to try to make the best picture, but there is some time waiting in between. Smile Shot waits for the people to smile and then takes it. Beauty makes everything a bit softer. Panorama is a slide to take a panorama. I'll show you an example later, which is actually good. The stitching on it is great. It's very accurate. Cartoon is amazing. I'll show you an example too. Um, Share Shot and Buddy Share are both Wi-Fi direct. Or no, no, no. Mm. I believe Share Shot is Wi-Fi direct and Buddy Photo Share is um, like online sharing with Facebook or something. I don't know, um, but I don't have another device to test with, so I can't tell you. Um, autofocus, you can change it to macro or have face detection on. Then settings here, you can edit your shortcuts. There's a bunch of different things in the settings that you can uh, tap and drag to move in there. Um, and then there's all these settings, scene mode, exposure, timer, effects, resolution, white balance, ISO, metering, all this stuff. ISO goes up to 800, pretty good. Auto contrast is on or off, guidelines, um, I believe there's anti-shake, yes. All sorts of good stuff. Now in video, video is really good. It's 1080p video. Um, while you're taking the video, you can tap to focus anywhere. So let me just start taking it. Focus, there we go. Oops, I didn't mean to stop that. Ah! Oh, I didn't. Okay, cool. So you can tap to focus anywhere during the video and it'll focus on it. So let me just uh, look at my hand. Focus. Or when you want to go back to autofocus in the center, you tap this autofocus button and it goes back to autofocusing in the center instead of on whatever you touched. So pretty cool there. And also, while you're taking that video, you can take pictures. And I forget the resolution, I believe it's. Um, 5 megapixel or so images in this 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's pretty nice. Um, here you can review all of your images. Let me just go show you the panorama real quick. Uh, that's my dog laying on the floor. Um, these are chinchillas, they are beyond cute, look at them. There's two chinchillas, they're like, they've grown up together, I work at a pet store. They're both pretty young and they just sleep on top of each other like that and it's so cute. Um, here's a panorama in my garage as you can see there is almost no actually there is no traces of where the stitching is if you can find out where these were stitched I will give you like 50 bucks because honestly um, okay I'm not actually gonna but my point is it stitches them very very nicely there is almost no trace that these were separate pictures it looks like it was one continuous picture um, here's a close-up of my brake calipers which I painted red which looked nice um, video stuff, I can show you, I don't know. I, don't know. I can show you this video really quick of my dog sleeping, um, she was running in her sleep, so I was trying to get a video of her, like, running with her, her feet, but I couldn't get it, um, so as you can see, quality's pretty good, uh, this is indoors, and uh, my finger's over the lens, um, so, you know, as you can tell, pretty good quality there, nice and sharp, um, I had anti-shake on there to test it. Um, I don't like anti-shake too much. It causes too much jitteriness. Here's all these settings for recording. You have your recording mode, which you can change to limit it. Exposure value, timer, effects, resolution, anti-shake, stuff like that. I recommend leaving anti-shake off because it actually does make it more jittery than it should be. Alright, and you can also change the storage and if you want flash on and if you want um, effects like negative sepia, Auto white balance, switch the video to the front. A lot of good stuff. Okay, wow, I am back. And for you, it was literally five seconds, but for me, it's been about five days. Um, I basically, whoopsie, um, after doing the first part, I just wanted to kind of have some more time with the device before I went on um, so that I could explore all of the next stuff because the next stuff is some of the, well, other than like the browser and some of the first stuff I'm going to do, um, it's going to be 
um, more like nitty gritty stuff that I might not have had as much experience with. So I just wanted to have some more time with it before I got into um, going over it in depth. Alright, so now I'm going to be doing a review of the browser. I'm just going to go into landscape mode um, so that you guys can see more on the screen. Alright, so let me just get this situated real quick. Oh, let me zoom out a little. Okay, good enough. Let me just make it level so you OCD people don't get pissed. <laughs> Alrighty, good to go. So, um, first of all, I'm just going to go over the one negative, actually two negatives. Um, really the only two about the browser. First of all, it limits your number of tabs to eight. So if I keep adding, oh right, it goes to each one. If I keep adding tabs, it's going to stop me once I get to eight. Um, it's kind of good for, you know, saving RAM and stuff. But still, um, I have found I do like to have more than eight tabs sometimes. As you can see, it won't let you add new ones. Um, but, you know, you can just close them out and then it lets you add more. And it's very easy to close them. Um, the other thing I don't like is you cannot set it to open the desktop view by default. Um, you know, normally you wouldn't because this is a mobile device. But as you can see, on the 4.8 inch screen, this mobile view or um, desktop view site... Um, you can read everything on here perfectly fine. You can click all the links fine. Um, I haven't found any problems with desktop sites. Um, so to get the desktop, like for your session, you have to have this checked. But it gets unchecked whenever your session ends. Um, normally under advanced in um, other browsers, not built into Android yet, but it should be. There is a setting somewhere to enable, or to change the, um, I forget what it's called. But it allows you to choose the uh, device you want it to be loaded for. So you can have like mobile, tablet, desktop, whatever you want. Um, but getting onto the good parts about the browser, it's extremely fast, extremely responsive, as you can see. Zooming, nice and clean. It does have to like kind of, when you zoom in, re-render it, which obviously makes sense. Because when you first zoom in, as you can see, it's a little blurry. I don't know why it flashed, but whenever. Um... So, zooming out, it has little whites where it has to reload the stuff. And also, when you zoom out, if you're all the way zoomed out, it goes into... Wow, I'm messing up. There we go. It goes into the tab view. So, I'm just going to open up in Gadget because that's a pretty common website to kind of compare web page fluidity, I guess you could say. So, here we go. This is the desktop site because I went right there and I've been here before and selected desktop. Uh, first time you load it, obviously it's going to do mobile. As you can see, it loads up very, very quick. It's all done now. Scrolling is nice and smooth. It is, um, if you do like gentle scrolls, it has like a nice, um, you know, it doesn't go too far. It just goes just enough. But if you really flick it, you can get all the way to the top very, very easily. So I like kind of the scaling, um, like the speed you flick as opposed to how far it goes. It is a very nice ratio I guess. I know it's getting really technical but because you know with big pages like this sometimes you want to get to the top and bottom really quick so if you flick I mean there I'm pretty much at the top quick but if I just want to go down to the next story I just do a little flick like this okay go down to the next one oh, back up to it I want to zoom in on this picture it's all black which doesn't really help you compare but anyway you can see there's all this flash content up here Zooming in and out is fine, no troubles, even while this is playing and changing. A little bit jittery when a lot's going on, but it's really barely anything. Um, it's not noticeable in day-to-day -day stuff. So, um, what else about the browser? Let me just go through all the settings of the browser real quick for you guys. In general here, you have your home page, uh, form fill auto and autofill text, which you can set up a whole... Uh, barrage of information here. It's kind of like last pass for the PC um, if you've ever used that. And it's also available for some other browsers. Privacy and security, you know, clear all your stuff, accept cookies or not accept them, remember form data, clear all your form data, remember passwords, clear all your passwords, enable notifications, clear your notifications. Pretty basic stuff. Um, accessibility, make the text bigger and for zoom. Some other stuff like this, inverted screen rendering, um, you know, but you only have to use that if you have, um, some sort of, uh, viewing or, well, actually for this it's just viewing disability. 
Um, so otherwise you don't have to worry about that. Um, search engine, you can change it, which is kind of weird being that it's an Android device, but hey, it's good that they give you options. Um, open in background or open on um, above your current page. I like to open in background so it doesn't mess with what you're doing. You can open multiple tabs really quick. Um, enable all plugins, where you want to store your cache, um, website settings for individual websites, your default Zoom, open pages and overview, auto fit web pages, you know, lots of advanced stuff like it says. Um, bandwidth management, this stuff I really just don't bother messing with. You can preload your search results, results and uh, load images. Um, not too much there. And also labs, uh, full screen, I highly recommend you check that. And uh, quick controls, you can check that too if you would like. I'll show you what they are real quick. So here it gets rid of that top bar at all times. If you want to access settings, you slide in oops, from the left here. And then you have options to add a tab, see all your tabs and scroll through them. Uh, <clears throat> open up the address bar. Uh, bookmarks and then your settings but I don't really like that because it's kind of a pain to do that each time when it's easier to just scroll to the top and click click um, so let me just go re-enable that so I don't forget later and get confused <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much it with the, the browser um, flash player works JavaScript usually works and except for like actually I believe all JavaScript works I'm, I don't know what I'm saying um, flash games do work although Obviously, there's no point of doing any ones other than touch games because there's no like keyboard for this unless you have a Bluetooth keyboard. But for a phone, I don't know. I'm sure people have done it. Um, anyway, now I'm just going to get into the loading times for... Let me just get this situated. I can't think and talk at the same time. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get to wireless um, speed tests. Now, you're going to have to excuse me, I do not have a 3G speed test, however, I can estimate what it would be. Uh, the reason for that is there is no option to toggle 4G on and off, and like only have 3G enabled, you have to just always have it. So let's go to my results. Over Wi-Fi, as you can see, um, ignore some of the lower test results, those were during peak hours. Usually over Wi-Fi, I average about 20 megabits per second, which is around the top um, that my router can do at my house. Um, but it's good because on my old droid, the processor wasn't able to handle that 20 megabits per second. It can only handle about 8. So as you can see with the S4, it can handle much, much faster data speeds. Um, it could probably handle more than 20. Actually, it can handle more than 20 because 4G gets faster than that. So I would say it could handle up to maybe 30 megabits per second, um, which if you don't know conversions, that is... Um, about four megabytes per second. Um, then I have two over 4G. When I got 15, when I got 17 megabits per second. I don't run it too many times because it does use quite a lot of data to run the test. Um, but it is pretty, pretty fast. And this was regular 4G, not 4G LTE. The difference LTE being in um, cities, it's much faster. Um, but I'm in like a rural area, so this is a rural 4G. So City 4G, I would expect it to be 25 plus megabits per second. Um, so very fast data transfers. Um, for those of you even out of the 4G range, 3G, I would expect about 8 megabits per second on average. Probably between 5 and 8. All right, moving on. Um, messaging. So, let me just... Whoops, okay. Let me go to into here, to a... Conversation with my friend. Actually, that one's... Okay, here we go. Conversation with my other friend. That's a lot simpler to compare with. Um, as you can see, this is not the default setup, but you can actually change what the bubbles look like, which is cool. You can also change the background. I chose black to save battery life. Um, as you can see, incoming text show on the left, outgoing on the right, and it always shows the times that each of those were sent, and for each new day, it shows a kind of banner bar. Also, if you tap on each either message, it gives you the exact time and date in case you aren't sure and you don't see the banner anywhere. Um, <clears throat> going into the typing section of this, because I will be doing the keyboard with this. This is not default. Let me just change it real quick. I'm using SwiftKey because I personally don't like the default Samsung keyboard. 
All right, so here is the default keyboard. As you can see, the keys are nice and spaced, so you can type whatever you want. Um, key pop-ups don't occur if you... Actually, they do occur every time. If you tap it very, very, very quick, key pop-ups won't happen. But for the most part, you're not going to be typing that incredibly quick. So it will pop up to show you which letter you're, you're typing. So... I'm hungry. Um, as you can see, I think I have to turn on the, uh, what's it called, autocorrect. So here's all the setting for it. Input languages, predictive text, which I'm actually going to turn off because I don't like it too much. Um, handwriting's pointless, shut that off. <laughs> it just really is, I'm not even going to bother showing it, it's such a waste. Um, where would be the... That's weird, I don't see a... There doesn't appear to be an autocorrect. That's really strange, actually. Apparently there's no autocorrect in it. Yeah, that's that's odd. So, um, another reason I don't like the default keyboard. Um, but the good thing with Android is you can always go and install other keyboards and just use them easy as that. Um... But I mean, basically, this is the keyboard. Um, you can go into the symbols, settings. If you long press here, it gives you the number. But you'd have to hold for quite some time, which I don't like. I like it to be pretty snappy. Um, also, going in here, you can have letters with accents. Like, H doesn't have an accent. What am I talking about? A. You can do the A's with all the accents, stuff like that. Um, landscape, let me show you real quick. I'm not going to bother zooming my camera for this. Um, as you can see, the keys are still spaced about the same, but you have much more room to type. Um, they are a little bit thin height-wise, but it's not bad. It's still very easy to press what you want, it's like the lazy brown fox jump oops, over the... I forget the words, but... So as you can see, it is pretty accurate, but because there is no auto-correct, or as far as I can tell, there is no auto-correct, um, it does make it a pain you want to go back to correct. So for that reason, I definitely recommend you get Swift Key. I'll just show you very, very quick. I'm going to go over this at the end, too. Swift Key. Here it is. It looks pretty similar. You can actually change the theme, which is good. Um, but it does have auto-correct. Actually, that's not even close to a word. So that GHIST will automatically correct to ghost. Um, I'm going to go over it more later, so I'm not going to bother going over it now. Um, as far as messaging goes, you can attach a bunch of things here. I'm not going to read all that so you can look. That's everything. You don't have to scroll. So you can attach all of those files. You can type whatever you want. This button sends it. I'm obviously not going to send that to my friend who probably would be a little confused. Um... And also, let me just go into settings real quick. So here you can change the bubble style. There is four or five to choose from. So you have, these are the standards, the blue and yellow, which I don't really like. I find them to be a little bit, I don't know, too poppy, I guess. But you can always, you can change them to match, like you can do both the post-its. Or you can mix and match, which I guess you can if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it, but, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, change the background style, there's a bunch of different ones. Obviously the darker, if you text a lot, you're going to want a darker background because that will save a lot of battery life, believe it or not, uh, because of the AMOLED screen. Uh, next thing I recommend is using the volume key, just checking it once, going in here, and changing the text size to your likings. So I like it, not the smallest, but one up from the smallest. Um, so that way I could fit a lot of text on the one screen. And then I just go and uncheck that because there's really no point to always keep it checked unless you have glasses and you sometimes wear them, sometimes don't. So then, then maybe that'd be a good thing to keep checked all the time. Delete old messages, you can tap that and set a limit. Um, I believe it's up to 9.99, But it does take a while to go up because you have to hold the thing. Uh, actually, can you type it in? Yes, you can type it in. There we go. Yeah, 999 is the max. 
So I'm not going to set that because I like to keep more than that because for me that's about two days worth of text. Um, so I just keep all of them and erase them all whenever I want to. Delivery reports, I usually like that, but for some reason uh, this one decides to put a little notification in the status bar and it vibrates every time the person receives the message. Um, before I liked the, uh, on other phones, it had like a little toast notification or it just didn't tell you at all and it just showed a little symbol. Um, but this one, I don't really like it being in the notification bar, having to get rid of it after every message I send. If you only send a few each day, then maybe that'd be a good thing to enable. Otherwise, not really. Um, input mode, you can change these if you want. I don't see why you would. Just leave it at automatic. That's the easiest. Delivery reports again for multimedia. Read reports, you know, all the, the classic stuff. Creation mode, here you can see. You can have a warning or restricted which I believe this just limits how much you can put in it. I, I'm not really sure actually on that one. So broadcast, notifications, um, and select ringtone. But for most of the things that you want to do with this, for notification settings, you have to go into the settings part of, or the sound part of the settings menu. Just so you know, most of it's not there. Um, but anyway, as far as the messaging app goes, it is very good. Um, it's very fluid loading everything is quick if a message fails um there's a little um i no ex excuse me hiccups explanation point you just tap it and on my retry so it's very very easy a very good messaging app in my opinion um i've tried a few other third party apps and i actually don't like any of them as much as i like the default messaging app um let's move on to the contacts and the phone um, which they have separate icons, although they are in the same app. As you can see, it's just a different tab up here. But when you tap contacts, it goes into the different app. So actually, I'm sorry, they are different apps. Um, they're just, they have links to each other. So, here is the phone. Um, not much to it, as you kind of should expect. You can dial the number, and if it is beginning to look like somebody in your contact, it will show a bunch of suggestions. And you can hit the down arrow here, because there's 104, it took a second to load. But as you can see, pretty much everybody starts with 845, that's my area code. Um, what does that button do? Actually, I actually don't know what that button does. Oh, okay. Voice commands, we could have it automatically call somebody. You can just say it if you want, if you're too lazy to type it. Um, <laughs> I guess that's an option. But whatever, you can set up speed dials, obviously. Send a message from here, and you can also go into your call settings. Um, there's a bunch of, like, reject calls automatically, call alerts, answering options, um, stuff like this. In sound equalizer. Um, increase volume. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, it actually increases the volume of your ringer when you're, it detects that your phone's in your pocket as opposed to being out on a desk. So th that means that whenever your phone gets an incoming call, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the proximity sensor and possibly the light sensor to see if it is in an enclosed space um, and in a dark space. And if it is, then it's automatically going to ring a little bit louder, which is good. Um, voicemails, settings, stuff like that. You can change your voicemail service to, if you have um, Google Talk, I believe, on here, you can change your voicemail service very quickly between my carrier and the others. Um, I believe there's a secret menu to get onto Samsung devices, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, here you can see recent calls, favorites, and then you can jump into your contacts. And in your contacts section you have groups, which I don't have any. Yeah. Um, really, you can set up groups, but I don't see the point unless you do group text a lot, like send a, a bunch, the same text to a bunch of people often. Um, but here you can see all of your contacts. Um, you can scroll through, add a new one, uh, search for somebody, and you know, all the basic stuff you can do in contacts. Also, cool thing is though, if you want to call somebody, you swipe, sorry, to the right. So you take their name and you swipe to the right to call. And if you want to text them, you swipe to the left which is pretty cool, it's easy to use, um, but personally I don't use the phone book often. If I want to send a message, I just go into the messaging app and add them. Inside the contact you'll see the connection, 
Um, you can also join multiple contacts, like I have my Google contacts, all my Google contacts are people with phone numbers, then I have all my Facebook ones synced, and then I just merged all of the Google and Facebook contacts. Um, so that's pretty cool, I'm glad you can do that, it's a good thing. You can set um, vibration patterns for each person individually, as well as ringtones, add them to groups, uh, send, if they have multiple numbers, send each one a message or call them. And you can edit them, of course. You can like add birthdays and a bunch of cool stuff like that. All right, that's good for phone contact information-y stuff. Now I'm going to go on to all of the wallpapers built in. First of all, gallery. It's your gallery, obviously. It is um, not the built-in ones. It's the pictures you took or added. Wallpapers. These are the still wallpapers that come with it. First, there's the dandelion with uh, the floating away seeds, which is pretty cool, which is what I use. Uh, next, there's like water drops. There's a um, little water drop that's on, I guess, a leaf, some kind of green surface. There's a nice purple flower, which is really, really vibrant, and it really shows the uh, AMOLED screen. It's colors very nicely. And then there's this orange one with like, a little water drop. Um, as, because you know the Galaxy S3, it's inspired by nature. All of these are nature-related. I'm actually going to set this as the wallpaper right now. Um, and then it gives you an option to crop it if you want to move it around or if you just want to have a small portion of the picture in it. Um, but because the home screen doesn't scroll, you only have to pick that uh, one like section. You don't have to pick a bigger section than it is and scroll. I kind of wish it scrolled, but whatever. It's not really a big deal. Now I'm going to go into all the live wallpapers. Bubbles is the first one. As you can see, it's just bubbles. There's no settings for it, but when you... Oh, it doesn't show you in the preview. When you uh, tap and swipe, it'll move the bubbles away from your finger. Pretty simple. Copter didn't come built in, so going out to deep sea. These are supposed to be jellyfish. I guess they kind of look like jellyfish, not really. Um, same kind of um, like coating as the bubbles one. They will move away when you swipe your finger, but you can add multiple different sized ones, how fast you want them to move, stuff like that. Luminous dots, this one is pretty cool. Oops, you don't want to see the paper. Um, basically, it's just all of these dots. The whole screen is a grid, and it just lights them up slowly and moves around. And you can change the speed, the scale, the pattern, all sorts of stuff, the shape of the dots, too. So it's pretty cool. Um, if you do like live wallpapers, this is personally my favorite, and I would recommend that. Next is the news wall. This one's pretty cool, too. Oh, oh, sorry. This shows kind of like flashing in um, news stories, which is um, pretty cool the effect that it does, um, but really I'm not that much of like a global news person. Um, I watch the news every day, yeah, but I don't want the news floating around on my uh, background of my phone all the time. Um, but some people might, so that is a pretty cool app. Next is Phase Beam, again one of the uh, standard Android ones, it's just floating stuff. Um, looks pretty cool though. Uh, Photo Wall is one of Samsung's, this one looks pretty cool. It just uh, flashes through all of your photos and it changes them every so often. You can change the sliding speed and also the layout. Um, if you want them all to be like equal size, three rows or single picture. And you can select which photos you want. But as you can see it is pretty cool how it kind of just scrolls through all of your pictures like that. Um, next is the stock wall, very similar to the news, only with stocks. And here you can add your stocks and set an auto-refresh interval. Uh, next, Symphony of Colors. I downloaded that, sorry. Um, windy Weather, this one's pretty cool. Um, as you're going to see, it does like lag a bit there. That's because it's changing the scene. Um, this is pretty cool if you live in an area that the weather changes a lot. But I live in New York, so usually it's sun or clouds. So it's pretty boring to have this. But I mean, as you can see, some of the weather... Effects like the rain, lightning, snow, those are really cool looking. You can set the auto refresh interval, that's it. Um, so this will change with the current weather at your current location. So that's rain, lightning, as you can tell, snow. So it does look pretty cool and I do like it. Um, but because I live in somewhere boring, it's not really the most effective for me. Wow, okay, this is going to be a very long video. Um, next, S Voice and S Memo. These are two of uh, Samsung's apps that they threw in. SMMO, I'm going to go over very, very quickly, not spend too much time. Basically, these are all built in. You can either add a picture that you can sort of draw on, 
Uh, you know, you can change the color, you can add text if you want, um, stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. Um, you can change the color of the text, I believe, the color of the drawing, not sure how. There we go. Touch and hold, and you can change the color to anything you want, and draw in, and ooh, draw in green. Um, you know, good for making quick little memos, but I use it more for notes, like this. Um, so you can just touch and type there, um, touch over here, type over here, touch over here, type over here, and enter, it goes to the next line. Um, I wish the next line would go to, like, the beginning of where you were typing last, but whatever, no big deal. Um, so that's pretty much it for S Memo. Not very crazy there, just a very simple notes app. Next is S Voice. This is basically, um, identical to Siri, so, um, if, yeah, pretty much it was copied from Siri. But I'm not going to get into the whole copying who copied who, because Apple copied Android, Android copied Android. Apple. <laughs> that was weird. Um, no. Cancel. But basically, um, it is pretty good. It works pretty good. It isn't super fast on the draw, but um, it does what you need it to do. Um, it doesn't have much of a, as much of a personality as Siri. I will probably do a comparison of... Um, S Voice versus Siri soon. I'll take my mom's iPhone and uh, just do them side by side, give them the same commands, see how they react. But if I want to say, set an appointment for today at 3 p.m. So basically, you just say what you want to do and it'll do it. Um, the voice recognition is pretty good. Um, occasionally, it'll slip up and not recognize it if you talk too fast or if you have like an accent or something, um, but most of the time it will recognize it. As you can see, it is not the fastest, but it's good enough. Let me just cancel that. Um, but another cool thing is you can have it set... Okay. Um, another cool thing you can have it set is when you say Hi Galaxy, or one of your CS that you can see, there it goes, it wakes up. Um, or you can change actually what you want the phrase to be and you can have it learn. Um, you can also do this on the home screen, but I found that drains battery a lot on the home screen, so I do not leave that enabled. Um, that's pretty much it for S Voice. Done. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Now I'm going to go over these three. Um, these three are basic built-in Android applications, but Samsung did a little bit to customize each one. Here is the clock. As you can see, you can set alarms um, for waking up in the morning. Oh, dear. <laughs> Create an alarm if you want it to repeat or repeat weekly. Alarm type, volume, tone, snooze, how long the snooze, name the alarm, the time. Basic stuff like that. World clock, you can see the time in as many places as you want. You can add cities. There are tons and tons and tons and tons of cities to choose from. Um, I believe there's multiples in every time zone. You can also go to a global view, and you can pick the city closest to you if you don't know which one's closest. Um, oh, it actually shows the whole zone. That's pretty cool. When you select the city, it shows the whole zone that it's in, the, so you can see the whole time zone area. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can go, obviously, Africa, China, Russia, globally. And if you can't find one near you, just click around until you find something in the same time zone. So you live, if you live in the middle of Russia, you have the Galaxy S3. Um, just find something in China that has the same time zone. Um, yeah. So let me go back here. Um, stopwatch, obviously. Start, lap, 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 stop, reset, basic. It works, it's good. Uh, here you can set a timer for, say, 50 minutes and 98, 59 seconds. Um, you can just let that go. You can also do a desk clock, which is pretty nice if you have it propped up. Um, you can have it go to full screen here. And this is the, what the dock is like when you plug it into the, um, official Galaxy dock. It'll go right to this screen, which is cool. You can, oh, sorry, you just tap one of these and it'll go to the alarm. Music, gallery, internet, I believe you can edit these. Yes, you can. Um, the dock here you can, oh, never mind, that's docking, um, actually I don't know if you can edit them, I might have just, oh yes you can, there we go, edit, okay, so you can edit them, the only one you can't edit is the alarm, but no big deal, it shows the weather, time, date, stuff like that, pretty cool. Alright, 
let's go to the calendar. Oh, that is a calculator. I am stupid. Let's go to the calculator, shall we? Um, oh god, my mom's nuts. Um, I hope you didn't hear that. Um, so basically, it's a standard calculator. 50 plus 6. Guess what it equals? 56. Um, you can keep adding plus 6, which is cool. Um, but the problem is, if you want to get to all those advanced features, you got to go into landscape mode. But then it just shows them all right there. So let me just go back, and, oh, oh, that's not good now, is it? I don't know why that did that. Let me just close that, and then, that was very odd. Um, excuse me. But anyway, you got your basic functions here, your open and close parentheses, um, which is like kind of smart parentheses, which I don't like. I wish it gave you the option, which I believe it does in landscape. Let me just check quickly. Um, no, it still does not. So you do not have a choice. It's kind of like the smart parentheses. So if it doesn't do what you want it to do, bummer. Um, I don't like that other than that. It is a good calculator application. Here you can change... Oh, okay, shut up. You can change whether the number is negative or not. Um, you know, simple calculator. Not much changed from the stock Android. And here's the calendar. I like this much better than the stock Android calendar. Um, if you swipe... Swiping down, you can go to the next month. Um, you can select days and see what's going on for that day. Um, it says it all in here, and if it's multiple days, it shows a bar. You can tap on the events, go to it, and uh, edit it, or you can just double tap on the day. It shows you the times. Um, if it's an all-day event, it just shows it up top. Um, you can zoom out here to see the whole year view, and you can jump to whichever day you want, or go to the next year, next year, back... Um, you can go to the calendars, which ones you want to display on here today. You can pop up what view you want to see, a task view of what things you have to do. Oh. Um, an agenda of the things in the order and the days. Um, weekly view, day view, you know, all this stuff. Um, obviously, most, most people prefer month view. And then just to see the day, they will, you know, double tap and go see what times and stuff like that. So, pretty good calendar. Definitely better than stock Android. Um, nothing too amazing, but it's just a calendar. It is very good for what it does. Alright, moving on to the built-in widgets. Um, you have to excuse me, I have a lot of stuff downloaded. So I'm going to have to explain to you which ones are built-in, which ones aren't. Alright, these guys aren't. These guys aren't. Um, the alarm is, and the assistive light is... Um, which are both alarm, it just shows your next alarm. Assistive light, it turns on the flash on the back. Books are built in, you can set a, a quick jump to any book, say the book you're reading. Bookmarks, same idea, I can show you them too. Calendars built in, the calendar mini today is also all these calendars are built in. They just um, are all those little tabs that I showed you before. Um, the digital clock, the funky clock, and the regular analog analog clock are built in, as well as this color kind of streaming thing. Also these uh, two contact ones are built in. This one shows all the contact information, this one is just a quick jump to that contacts page. Um, iCopter isn't direct call is, direct messages, obviously send messages directly to a contact, directions and navigation to a specific point, um, so say a good one for this is if you want to take you home. So you can put in your home address, change the icon, to whatever the home one is. I guess there's no home. Whatever. Um, but you know, you can change the icon, name it, name it home. And so whenever you want to go home, you just tap it and it takes you home. It's pretty cool. Um, you can have this dual clock, which shows you the time in two places. Uh, drive isn't built in. Dual clock. Um, digital is also built in. Uh, the email is built in. The Gmail is built in. Gmail labels built in, and the Google Play Books is built in. Uh, Google Play Music is not built in. You have to download Google Play Music if you want it. Um, right now, it comes stock with a different music player. Google Search built in, uh, as well as with the lighter version of Google Search. Uh, Google Plus Post is built in, I believe. Uh, this guy isn't. The Groupcast is built in. Um, as you'll see, most of these widgets are just shortcuts to direct parts inside apps. But some of them are like toggles and stuff like that. Um, Latitude's built in. This mono audio toggle's built in. 
<clears throat> this music player for the stock um, music player is built in. Music playlist, uh, I believe that's built in too. My Verizon Dad is built in. Negative Colors is built in. Uh, the Picture Frame is built in. Uh, Play Store is built in. S Bookmarks is built in, which is actually a pretty cool bookmarks app. Um, S Memo is built in. S Suggest is built in, although S Suggest is just a waste pretty much. It's just apps that they suggest, um, but it takes up a full page, which is pretty nuts. Um, the setting shortcuts built in. Um, these guys aren't, these guys aren't. Traffic is built in, video player, um, which is cool. It's just like a little video player on the screen. Let me put it over here. It's, uh, cool. You can just add whichever videos you want, and it'll play them there. So that is very cool. As you can see with this video player, it does live, um, playing of each video. So... I believe, yeah, here we go. It shows the last video you were playing and takes a shortcut to it. I'm going to go over more of that stuff, though, when I get to the video player part of this, which is... Did I skip it? Oh, well, I'm going to have to do that at the end. <laughs> oh, well. Back to widgets. Um, last page, uh, VZ Navigator's built in, although I don't like VZ Navigator. Google Maps made it's free and it works better. Um, weather's built in, Yahoo News is built in, Yahoo Finance built in, and the YouTube widget's built in. So, um, some pretty good widgets that are built in. There's definitely a large variety of built-in widgets. <clears throat> and some that I like are the assistive light. As you can see, it's super bright, comes on instantly, no delay. Um, that one's not built in, but I always like those music widgets. Um, I like the Gmail widgets, show you all your emails. I like the digital clocks. Um... Weather wasn't built in, and neither was Lookout, but those are just some of the ones that I use. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, my voice is very, very raspy right now from all this talking. Wow, 40 minutes already. Um, this is going to be a crazy long in-depth review. Um, next is actually the gallery and the music player. Gallery I'll go into first. As you can see, it should show local pictures, but for some reason they aren't showing. Um, and whenever I click on them, it like messes things up, even though it says there's 16 there. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. But as you can see, you can see all the pictures you took on your camera, and they're all divided by uh, type. My pictures. For some reason, the thumbnails occasionally get messed up like this, which is weird. You have to go and like force close it, and then go back into it. I don't know why it does that. It's pretty strange. Um, screenshots are there. It did it again, see? I don't, I don't know what's going on with it. Um, but anyway, when you go into the pictures, they're fine. All the pictures are there. You can edit them because it is the... Oh, no you can't. I lied. I lied. <laughs> you can only crop them. It doesn't have the edit that, um, the Google Gallery has. They took out that feature for some strange reason. Um, but you can do the face tag, which automatically tags any faces it sees. Um... So some pretty cool stuff. And also if you play any videos, it automatically takes you to the video player. Um, so let me just go back out of that and go to the video player. Because the gallery is a bit buggy. You can always download a third-party gallery. There's also some ice cream sandwich look-alike galleries. Uh, only reason I didn't is because I wanted to review this stock gallery. Um, but here's the video player. It shows little mini clips of every single video you have. And it plays them, which is awesome. Um, it's just kind of like showing off the power of the CPU and GPU that it's able to do this. Um, so you can get a little preview of what each video is before you go and watch it. Um, just in case you don't know exactly what the video is. Because, like, you know, sometimes from a thumbnail, uh, it doesn't show from thumbnails here. Sometimes from a thumbnail, you can't tell what it is if you have two similar videos. Or they, they start out the same or whatever. So, on this, you can see exactly what the video is, which is pretty awesome. And then if you want to watch any, you just obviously tap it to view it. So here is a video of my puppy when I first got her a long time ago. And each video, you can pause it, play, uh, skip back, rewind if you touch and hold, go to the full screen, which kind of just stretches it funkily. Um, you can also do this pop and play thing, which is awesome. I messed it up. Shh. Um, let's try that again. Why does it go to the... Mm. There we go. Okay, that was a little odd. Basically, pop and play pops a little 
window that plays the video until the video ends and then it disappears. Um, I don't know what that was doing there. But whatever, let me try that again. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, it pops up a little thingy and you can throw that wherever you want. Um, it doesn't let you throw it off the screen, which is good, although I wish you could uh, do that to get rid of it. That would be a cool feature. Um, if you just kind of like flipped it off the screen. But it just plays the video. It doesn't cause uh, pretty much any lag on the home screen when you're like scrolling and doing you can send messages and stuff while the video is playing which is pretty awesome next thing is smart stay which I can't really demonstrate to you I'll just describe what it is basically how this works it's under display and smart stay where are you here it is smart stay how that works is whenever the screen timeout runs out that's so for me it's every 30 seconds of inactivity what it does is it, it takes a very quick low resolution picture with the front camera and it looks at the picture and it analyzes it and if it sees a face with eyes that are watching the screen it'll automatically add another 30 seconds or whatever your timeout time is um, and it will keep the screen from going off however if it doesn't see as you can see that eye icon just went which means it took a picture if it doesn't see it will try again in a few seconds and if it still doesn't see like it won't it shuts off it works pretty good in about 99% of situations. Um, obviously, it doesn't work if you're in a dark room. Um, if it doesn't work if it is super, super glary on the screen, or if there's like a big, big light behind you, um, like the sun, um, then it won't work all that well. But I found that usually it does work, and it does help save battery because keeping the timeout at 30 seconds uh, times it out when you're not using it and not watching it. But if you are watching it, if you're reading something, it'll keep it on for you, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so it does work most of the time. Now, um, one of the final things I'm going to go over is all the voice commands you can do with this. It's pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do now is just, I'm just going to go enable them in this set. Actually, it's quicker to go this way. Um, settings. Ooh, wake up. There we go. All right. So from the lock screen, you can say any command you want to so do anything you want. But what I have here is... Um, just the basic one setups. The first one, wake up, wakes up your device. And the second one, hi Galaxy, will take you right into this. Pretty awesome if you don't say so yourself. Uh, <laughs> so the only reason I don't keep that enabled is because first of all, it's a little bit more gimmicky than it is useful, um, even though it is cool. Um, but the second reason is it just drains the battery pretty bad whenever you're on the lock screen because it's always going to turn on the mic to listen. But here you can set up wake up commands to do whatever you want. You can open, uh, well not whatever you want, any of these things. But you can make, you can say whatever you want. So if you wanted to say like potato to do something, you could do that. It would be very weird, yes, but you can do it. So you can check for missed calls, check for missed messages, unlock open camera, check schedule, play music, record voice. So these are all the things that you pretty much want to do from the lock screen that you want to have activated by voice. So it's pretty cool, like, um, say you're driving, screen lights up, you, um, because you get a text, you can say, uh, whatever your command is, check for missed messages, and it'll probably, like, read out the messages to you or something like that. I don't know, because I haven't actually done that. Um, again, like I said, it's a bit more gimmicky than it is useful, but still, nonetheless, a cool feature. Um, you can also do that like I showed you from this setting, not this setting, uh, the S voice. If you say, hi, Galaxy, it'll wake up and it'll start, like, as you can see, it says that. If you set your own wake-up command, you can change the command if you want. Um, it'll just, like, say, um, say your wake-up command to wake me up or whatever it is. All right, next thing I'm going to go into is quickly some recommended apps and stuff. I'm going to go quick because I know this video is about an hour and a half long already, and um, I don't want to lose too many of you guys, even though you probably would have left already if you were going to. All right, let me just go through. Um, nothing really here. Um, not too much here. I would recommend Juice Defender. Um, basically just enable, disables your Wi-Fi or your data, whatever you want, when the screen's off to help save battery. I'd also recommend HD Widgets, that's a good app. Um, it gives you weather and stuff, there's a bunch of different options, here it is. I believe it costs like a buck or something like that. Uh, Juice Defender's free unless you buy like the ultimate version. 
Um, I would recommend Kingsoft Office. This is basically the best Office application you can get, which has your documents, Excel, and PowerPoint. And the best part is it is free. So really, you can't beat it. Lookout, I would recommend. It is a good antivirus application. It also scans your apps once a week. And if you ever lose your device, you can go online and you can find it and you can actually lock your device from online um, and find the GPS location. Pretty cool. Uh, for games, I would definitely recommend Minecraft Pocket Edition. If you don't know what that is, I'm sorry. I can't help you. Um, Netflix, I'd recommend just a basic app. Uh, play music. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would also recommend play music. Um, I am not really a fan of these um, other music players that the companies give you, so play music is pretty good. Um, I like it a lot. Um, SwiftKey, I would definitely recommend, like I said before. I'm just going to quickly show you all the settings in SwiftKey. There's a ton here. You can go into like advanced. You can change what the spacebar will do, your typing style, audio and haptic feedback, how tall the keys you want them to be, um, change the theme, what it looks like. Um, there's about six. There are six themes. Um, so it's pretty good, and it is very, very accurate. Um, the cool thing is, when you're typing with SwiftKey, Excuse me, my voice is really crappy today. Um, if you're typing something and if you say, um, I'm trying to think of a good example, like, um, I'm going to IMU, might work. I don't know, but the point is, even if you spell some words right and you put them in, but they're like the wrong meaning, like if you say in instead of on or something like that, in most cases, it will figure out that you didn't actually mean to write ah, you might write it might meant to write in, and it will change it, even though the the word was obviously spelled correct if it was on. Um, so that's pretty awesome. It is really smart. And the only time it's ever really like corrected me when I didn't want it to was um, you know, if you're like exaggerating a word and you put two letters on the end, um, or if you say ha 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 ha. Um, it might automatically shorten it or make it longer to go with what it's seen before. Um, but other than that, it's really never messed up. It's pretty awesome, very accurate. Um, the fastest way to type without it out on your touchscreen device. Any at, at that. Um, next, I would recommend VGBA. is just a fun uh, Game Boy Advance emulator. Also, if you are rooted, get an app called Wireless Tether. Um, so that way you don't have to pay the 10 bucks a, month, bucks a month that Verizon charges you to use their tethering service. Um, again, if you're rooted, use um, AirBlock, which is pretty cool. It blocks all push air notifications. It's already blocked, which is good. So any of those uh, notification bar ads, it blocks um, most of them anyway. Some of them can bypass that, but for the most part, it'll block them. But it, if they can bypass it, you can do detect air push. It'll tell you which apps have um, those kind of notifications. As you can see, there's only one, but it's being blocked by this, which is good. Um, if you type with people who have iPhones, text with people who have iPhones, get emoji codec. It's basically just knows the codecs. You can um, copy any message that you get. If you get an emoji in the uh, normal text messaging, it just shows a empty like kind of box. Um, you copy the text, you paste it in here, you can see what it is. Then you can add your own little symbol-y things. Do, do, why is it? Okay, there we go. And then you can either copy that and paste it in, or you can send it directly from there, which is pretty good. Um, that's pretty much it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just say a few more things with the lights on. Oh my god, hold on. Uh, light switch was off. There we go. Let there be light. So, basically, um, would I recommend a case and or screen protector? Yes to both, without a doubt. Um, yes, it is Gorilla Glass 2, but just hold on a second. If I clean my screen very, very well, you will see that there is a very hairline, actually you probably can't see, right there, a very, very hairline scratch. Um, I don't know how it got there, but quite honestly, with normal use, the uh, smudges hide it well enough. When the screen's on, it is 
unnoticeable to every extent even with a perfectly white screen you cannot see it so um gorilla glass does hold up very well it is very strong but it, there is still is a chance that you might get a scratch in it um, and it, it can st shatter too it is not shatterproof so just keep that in mind um so what i was gonna say yes so you should get a screen protector i don't have one i got one with my incipio case but i screwed up putting it on so I didn't get one, but I probably will get one very soon just to protect the screen, because it is a brilliant screen. You don't want anything happening to it. Um, and even though I like the screen because it is super, super slippery um, stock, which is good, that's what you want in a screen, um, I would rather have it protected and be a little bit less slippery than be super slippery and then have it have like a big scratch or something in it, which I really doubt will happen because it is Gorilla Glass, but you never know. Better safe than sorry. Second, I would recommend a case not because this is slippery it is actually very 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 sticky you know you can hold it at this angle it's hard to see on camera but it's pretty much vertical and it stays in your hand it is very grippy it stays in your hand very well the problem is it is big it's a huge phone so some of you may not be used to holding a big phone like this if you grab it down here um, it might be a bit too top heavy might topple back stuff like that you just don't want to drop this phone it's um it is plastic, so it will be durable, but you still don't want to drop it. I mean, who would want to drop their brand new Galaxy phone, right? So um, definitely protect it. I'd recommend spending at least a few bucks on eBay, getting a cheap case from China, or going the extra mile. Um, not really, but getting a nice uh, manufacturer's case, like this Incipio case. This is the Incipio NGP case. I would recommend it to an extent. It is a very good case for the money, it's only 20 bucks. Um, it provides excellent protection, it has a little lip here to protect the screen if it's face down like that. Um, the material's great, it is, only problem is it a bit too slippery for my liking. Um, as you can see, it barely can stand my hand at like a, a 45 degree angle. Um, you probably can't see, but... So it is a bit slippery for my liking, and the power button is a bit difficult to press at first I, until the uh, case gets a little worked in. Volume buttons are fine though. As you can see, you can still hear the clicking, so it's very good. Um, all the ports are lined up though, the microphone is perfectly lined up top and bottom. Um, cutouts are nice and even and all that. So it is a very good looking case. The uh, brand is subtle, but it's still there and it looks nice. Very good looking case. The only problem would be that it is a bit slippery. So, um, uh, this is a NGP case. If you get a TPU case or a gel case, those will probably be similar, but a bit more, um, sticky. So, you can always go for one of those on eBay for, like, five bucks, literally, probably less. Um, but, you know, I do like the, uh, Insipio case, because it does come with the screen protector and a cloth, microfiber cloth, that's really good for cleaning. Even though I screwed up putting on the screen protector, which, you know, it happens. Um, okay, let me think, I did all of this stuff, um, okay, last thing, last thing I want to do, very last thing, I know this is kind of out of place, but, I just want to review these headphones that come with it, um, these headphones are absolutely amazing, I love them, I don't care that they're those free headphones that Samsung gives you with every Galaxy device, they're great, um, uh, as you can see, the plug, it has multiple, not multiple, it has uh, the f three, four sections here, four sections, which means it's more than just the audio, because audio, you only have three. Mm -hmm. um, what that extra thing is, is this button, which pauses and plays the music, and it also answers any calls. Um, this volume, adjusts volume uh, for the phone, too, and, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. It adjusts the volume on the phone, which in turn changes the volume in the headphones, it is uh, not like the volume on the phone stays constant. This just adjusts the volume in the headphones. This is adjusting the phone directly. Um, but anyway, these headphones, they have a really, really nice fit. The sound quality is excellent. The bass is really, really, really good. Um, you know, treble as you'd expect, it's good. But usually, uh, small earbuds like this have trouble with uh, good bass tones. But uh, these, they reproduce them very, very well. They are... Um, plenty loud and they do block out the outside sound very well because they are these kind of cup things. Um, but the good part with these is they don't go in too far. Some of these kind of earbuds, they go in too far. They get like kind of, it's kind of just weird how far they go into your ear. 
and it feels uncomfortable, but these feel pretty good. Um, also, uh, where do they go? Lost it. Uh, they come with extra different sized earbuds, which, oh wait, I know where they are. There they are. Got them. No worries. They come with uh, larger circles. They come with smaller circles right here. They also come with these ovals. The ovals are different colors so you can tell them apart. So basically, I tried each of these out. I found these standard, uh, normal size ones work the best for me. Um, the ovals pretty much the same, so if these work for you, you have the ovals as a backup when these get dirty or whatever. So that's pretty nice. Um, if these don't, if you have bigger or smaller ears, you can change out the pads to whichever your ear size is so that they fit perfectly for you. So, these headphones are really, really amazing. Normally, I wouldn't review like headphones or stuff that comes with the phone. I would just review the phone, but because these are so good, I just want to say that you don't need to go and purchase an extra set of headphones for your new phone. These will be plenty good enough for it and for any other devices that you might use that need headphones. Um, I'd say that these headphones, if you were to buy headphones that were of uh, the same quality, you probably have to spend 30, 40 bucks. So I mean, for free headphones that come with your phone, they are very, very good. Um, okay, that is it for the review. For those of you who stuck around or skipped to the end, um, either way, I would like to thank you very, very much for watching this. I put a ton of effort into this. I'm going to put a few hours into editing the video. Um, so really, I would, I would super appreciate a thumbs up if you could. That was my demented thumbs up. There's a normal thumbs up for you guys. Um, so yeah, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, comments, support, anything. You don't have to subscribe. I'm not going to beg you for subscribers, but just a thumbs up to show that you like the video would be greatly appreciated. As I'm sure you can tell, this video is going to be practically two hours long. Um, when I reviewed my Asus Transformer here, that was only about an hour for the in-depth review. This is two hours, and this I'm editing shortcuts in for to skip to any part you want. So, I like a ton of effort. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm doing it for you guys. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions at all, um, you know, it is an in-depth review, and it is two hours long, but I doubt I covered everything. So, if you have any questions, post a comment below. I will answer them as soon as possible, usually the same day or next day. Um, so that's all. Thank you again for watching. I'm glad I'm done filming this. Um, it's been a very, very long time filming, two days, hour each. Um, but that's it. Again, I'm stalling. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, so thanks. I'll see y'all later.